Hello everyone, my name is DevTech and we're continuing our tutorial on this game. Which is the beautiful Evocron Legacy. So, what's on today's menu? Today we're going to be doing F1. It's a navigation menu and possibly some other menu if I still have time. Uh, let's go over it. Alright, so. First off, before I start explaining anything... I want to kind of explain how to navigate this um, area here without explaining all the other buttons. So first off, you can scroll around, scroll backwards to zoom out, scroll uh, up to zoom in, which is very nice. You can kind of look at a different area to kind of target it. I think you can also drag, but let's not say that. If you're zoomed out like this, you can right-click somewhere to zoom in on that chunk specifically. And um, you can set a navigation point by left mouse button if you click somewhere. Now be careful when you do it like this because you also have to set it. Because this is top down and you also have to set it from the other side so that you can pick a height of where you want to have your nav point be. So be careful of that. Um, right. Having explained that really quickly, there's some stuff to go over over here. We have this little icon, which is a uh, warp gate. You have a station icon over here. You can't really see it right now, but there's a green little item over there, which is me. And I'll show that later. This is an asteroid belt. And um, that's the sun. Over here, we also have an asteroid belt with a small nebula inside. You can see the purple in there. That's uh, the nebula. I don't think we have a... Oh, there we have a clear one. So here we have a nebula on its own. I think some of the nebulas have their own little icon. And, of course, there's planets, but I don't think I have to explain the existence of planets to anyone here. All right. <clears throat> Having explained that, let's explain these little icons on the planet before we do the entire window and other stuff. Uh, this little box over here, uh, the big green box on the planet is the primary city on the planet. The little pluses are secondary cities on the planet, which you can also dock with, which are basically stations on their own right, but on the planet. Um, so having done that, there's a limit on how far you can zoom out until you get this. And this, my friends, is the quadrant map. What's the main difference, you ask? Well... If you look in here, oh, man. if you look in here on where we are, this is one sector. This is nine sectors. This is a couple more sectors. I don't even know. I, I think it's 20. Don't quote me on that. But so on and so forth. Um, you get the picture. But once you get in here, um, basically, if you look at the bottom left here, you can see where I'm aiming, and the S in front of the X, Y, and Z means it's a different sector. There is thousands of sectors in here in this game, and it is uh, magnificently large. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out, because some people sometimes don't know the difference between the X, Y, and Z and the S, X, S, Y, uh, S, Y, and S, Z. That's basically the difference because the S before it means what sector you're targeting and the X, Y, and Z is uh, the exact coordinates within the sector. A uh, little sector chunk. You can see down here at the bottom again with the X, Y, Z when I'm pointing directly in such an area. So that explains the navigation side on the big window in the middle. You can also click these little arrow buttons to move up one sector or move down one sector, just so you know. All right, now to explain the rest of the window. Here at the top left, we have the current position, which is the X, Y, Z within the sector, and the number of the sector in X, Y, and Z. You have form with target, which is an easy shortcut to do the action that that is. And you have launch. Now, remember when I said I was going to show you the little green dot? Well, it's more like a arrow, I guess. Well, I'm going to jump away here. 
to my nav point by clicking that button and there we go now I'm a bit more alone that's a player icon that'll be you in single player and if it's in multiplayer if you see other people they'll have the same icon with their name next to it um, and that is what the launch button does over here is allows you to jump to your nav point though your what level of fulcrum drive you have will depend how far you can jump sector wise you can jump a couple of sectors with the most uh, one being the least, five being the most, unless you have an experimental drive. Right. Other than that, we have waypoints over here. Uh, now, what this does is it gives a little bit of control around the waypoints. You can, again, activate the autopilot. You can ping, uh, which seems to add a little dot to where I am. I don't know what major significance it has, because I've never seen it be useful. Um... You have the map log, which I'm going to explain in a second. Uh, but first, I'm going to do set location, which sets the navigation pointer on my current location. Then we have add to log, which will allow us to write a small description, test location, for example. And then it will add that to the nav map. Now, what's handy about this nav map is I could be anywhere else. I can see a 2 here because it's a second point in my log. And I can click this, and then it will send me back to the nav location for my marker. So it's an easy way of uh, targeting uh, specific jump coordinates that you use frequently and uh, such things. <clears throat> Underneath that, we have the local points. Now, what it, it would have been a bit more specific for new players if it said local points of interest, but that would be wasting character space. So if you click on station, it will put your nav marker on the nearest station. If you click on gate, it'll do the same for the nearest gate. Planet, the nearest safe jumping location towards the planet. Well, I say safe. Don't take my word for it. You have to be very careful not to jump into the planet. Uh, and asteroids, which is the nearest asteroid belt. There can be other options like nebula and such on. Um, it depends on where you are and how close things are. Uh, whether they'll be there or not. Now, up here, we have the destination position. Like I said before, you can click anywhere to change your destination position, which is your nav marker. But you can also manually type in any coordinate you want, and it will change it for you. Uh, and in such, you can change the X, the Y, the Z, and the sector that you want to jump to with a sector X, Y, and Z, which again, that's why this is useful, because you know exactly what sector you're in and what location you're in. You also have this FD range and distance. I'm gonna be honest, I have not very much clue of what that is, but I am guessing here it is my distance to the nav point. <clears throat> And the FD range doesn't really seem to affect much at all. <clears throat> Either way. Oh, no, wait, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think I know, I think I remember what the FD range is. If I remember correctly, it, it should be the uh, range of your fulcrum drive. But uh, don't, don't, don't take that as a definite absolute truth. Um, it's just there. I've never had to use it, so it might just be nothing useful. <clears throat> Though, then again, it is there, so there might be a use to it. Um, all right, here we have the map controls. Now, these help us do a couple of controly things, such as zooming out, zooming in, in case you don't have a mouse scroll, um, changing the view from uh, this view, top down, to sideways so you can change your nav point in height um, you can also activate the slide mode which allows you to slide around with the left mouse button very handy and it also lets you um, do that with the right mouse button you can also go into 3d mode which is a very cool display of everything in 3d in, in your local sector and you can also zoom out for a larger 3d which is pretty damn cool, if you ask me. 
You also have the zoom map. Now this is a very large representation of what you were looking at previously. You can return using normal map. And then you can uh, return by clicking select mode. And then we're back here. So that's all pretty cool and gives a better understanding of where and what you're doing. Where you are, what you're doing. Next we have the map modes over here. This allows you to turn on text for the exact specifications of where something is in the sector and what sector it is. Very handy in certain uh, cases. Uh, it allows you to set exact destination coordinates so you won't hit the thing that you're trying to jump towards. Very, very handy. You can also single out things like planets, stations, gates, objects, like asteroids, and nebulas, and all of them. And then we have a quick button for the quadrant map, which again, ooh, is uh, this map. You can also, when you're here, you can right click to zoom in on a specific system. Alright. Well, down here in the options, we have two little options that are sometimes handy. We have the center option, which will center the map on your current location. And we have a uh, trans pause, which is transmit position, which shows it in the chat to all players in the server. So you can transmit your position to your friends if you're in dire need or want to call out because you ran out of fuel flying through space. Very handy button. Um, other than that, I also want you to note when I'm looking at a sector, there is a technology level which is 38 in this case, and a region number, who may be useful to some players. But the fun does not end there. When you're in quadrant mop, uh, mop, <laughs> that's an interesting word, uh, when you have the quadrant map up, uh, you can see that there's two little changes in the options button down here. You have territory and technology. Now, Territory and technology, these buttons will display something that may be utterly shocking. Also, before I open those up, I want to point out, wherever I look on this map, you can see the technology level, the uh, uh, the territory region, which says whether it's federation, disputed, or alliance, and their control percentages. That being said, let's head into the territory map. Now, this displays the this displays a whole bunch of stuff. You can see up here a small legend, which color does what. Uh, green being Alliance, yellow being Disputed, red being Federation, and purple being Bonari. What the hell Bonari is? Don't ask me. I don't know. I think it's an alien race of sorts. Alright. Next to the left there, you should see a new uh, window that has just appeared out of nowhere. It's the Commodity Values window. Now this window basically kind of displays the value of commodities in a certain percentage base, I guess. Uh, but in this case it's just bars. Uh, how well the commodity is doing uh, within that specific sector that I'm looking at. Which eliminates the need to fly to every station and go check. Though you can still do that. Uh, and it will probably be a little bit more clear on the exact prices. That is definitely, though, a handy thing. Basically, through the listing that you can see up there, it's cycling through all of the values. Which shows how many they want and how many they have, if I remember correctly. But, you know, don't take it as the word of God. Just, you know, make your own conclusions. Just, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's there. It's very handy at times. And other than this window, we also have the technology window. Now, maybe wondering what the fuck does that mean, the technology window? And again, it has the commodity values like to the left, in case you want to look at that stuff. Now, what does the technology mean specifically? People are people are a bit puzzled with that sometimes. Um, the technology level is well, the level of technology. Um, if you are in the red areas, you'll more likely find undeveloped areas with very low technology stuff, like uh, level 1 jump drives and stuff like that. Whilst if you're in the green area, you'll find high-tech items such as the uh, fully upgraded fulcrum drive, uh, high-quality high weapons, uh, missiles, such is the stuff. 
Um, as well as, I'm pretty sure the uh, grain area is your best bet at finding um, construction tools for the deployment and construction of a starbase. So that is what that means. Basically, as long as you're in the green zone, you're basically finding anything you want. And if, as long as you're in the red zone, you can just kind of kiss it because there's not going to be much. So that is pretty much all that is to the nav map. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe if you feel like it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.